Hi, my name is Dimitri, and in this screencast, I want to tell you about all the ways in which VSharperate enhances Visual Studio 2013. As you fire up Visual Studio, VSharper continuously checks the quality of your code and helps you out when things can be improved. For example, what happens when you use a type for which you haven't got a using statement? Well, in Visual Studio, this problem isn't even shown as an error. You basically have to spot the fact that the type hasn't been colored correctly, move the cursor over, and press a shortcut combination to bring up the fixes. But with ReSharper, things are different. So first of all, you always know when something's wrong. The type itself shows up in red, and you also get the marker bar with a red line indicator. You can't miss it, basically, so you won't have to wait until compilation time to know that something's wrong. Also what happens with ReSharper is that if you use a type that hasn't got a using statement it still shows up in code completion so you can select it and get both the completion and the using statement above so the type is ready to be used straight away. Another case is when you cut and paste code from a different file. With Visual Studio, you'd basically be going through every single location where a new using statement is needed and adding it by hand, whereas vSharper actually lets you import all the right namespaces into the file with a single shortcut. Another issue is when you've got too many using directives and you want to get rid of some of them. With Visual Studio, you've got no indication whatsoever which using statements are needed and which ones are not. And furthermore, even though you can remove all the ones that are not needed, you can only do this within the confines of a single file. ReSharper handles this situation much better. So first of all, you get a visual cue. The unused references are grayed out. And second, using ReSharper's fix and scope mechanic, you can actually get rid of unused references, not just in a single file, but also in the whole folder, project, or even the whole solution. Quite often, when working with generated code, you get redundant qualifiers in front of your types. And Visual Studio by itself seems to be perfectly happy with it. However, once again, ReSharper picks up on those as well and lets you quickly get rid of them. And the fix and scope mechanic works here too. Unlike Visual Studio, ReSharper actually cares about your naming conventions. So if your identifier has a name which doesn't match the naming convention settings, ReSharper will gently remind you about it by highlighting the issue and offering you a quick fix to automatically adjust the name. ReSharper also lets you navigate issues, so you've got shortcuts for either jumping between highlighted pieces of code or navigating only the errors. And while Visual Studio only offers you the aggregated list of issues after you compile at least once, ReSharper's solution-wide analysis can do it straight away with no compilation required. And here is a demonstration of some of the ways that ReSharper actually inspects your code. So for example, here we have a person class that's being initialized property by property. And what we can do instead is we can use an object initializer. So with ReSharper, you simply press Alt Enter and you choose that option. And now initialization is done in line. Here is another example where we have a fairly complicated for each statement. And ReSharper is saying that it can be converted into a link expression. So if we do that, we get a single link invocation chain. Here we're using person.name without having checked it for now and ReSharper tells us that there is a possible now reference exception here so once again we can press alt enter and actually check for null in the property name. Now here we have another simple example where we're handling an event and inside the event we're capturing a variable. So we're accessing a for each variable in a closure and this may have different behavior on different compilers, different c -sharp versions. So once again, ReSharper offers you the option to copy this to a local variable. Search and navigation features are ReSharper's particular strength. So here is a look at some of the ways that ReSharper's functionality compares to what you get out of the box with Visual Studio. By far the most popular navigation feature is go to declaration and this is something that Visual Studio supports to an extent in the sense that you can find a declaration for a particular class or class member but what if you've got a framework type that you're navigating to? In this case Visual Studio will simply take you to a text file generated from the type's metadata. ReSharper on the other hand goes off looking for available sources from PDBs for example or if the sources aren't available it simply decompiles the code using its built in decompiler. 
Now imagine you're about to change a piece of code and you want to check first of all the locations where the code is being used. All Visual Studio does in this regard is just give you a list of elements you can navigate to and that's it. With ReSharper there's actually two ways of navigating to usages. So first of all you can navigate so that you simply get a pop-up list of all the locations and this is useful for quickly finding the places where something's used and navigating to it without switching to a different window. Now if you want more info on where you're going you can bring up a separate toolbox window that's also a lot more informative than Visual Studio. You get to see the code where the element is being used but in addition you can also open a larger preview window that shows a view of the file you're about to go to. And in addition you can also filter usages. So if you're interested in just the places where a variable is written to or read from, you can get rid of other usages from the list. And finally, there is a bunch of grouping options just in case your result set is too big. And of course, double clicking on these takes you to the appropriate file. Now suppose you've got an interface and you want to find all the implementations of that interface. With Visual Studio, all you can do is try finding usages again, but that will give you too much info. With ReSharper though, you can also search specifically for the implementation of this interface. And ReSharper actually gives you a list of classes that implement this interface, as well as interfaces that inherit from it. Now here is a different scenario. How would you actually locate a particular file in a large solution? Well, in Visual Studio you basically have to perform a search in the Solution Explorer and as you can see it's not very fast and it gives you far too much data from completely unrelated source files. With ReSharper though there's a separate shortcut for finding a particular file or folder. You get to see just the files with the appropriate names but you can also use a camel case abbreviation that saves you some typing. Once you've got to a particular file though, how do you know where in the solution you actually are? And in Visual Studio you would need to open up the Solution Explorer and press the appropriate button. Whereas with ReSharper it really doesn't matter what window you've got open because you can simply press Shift Alt L and that brings about the Solution Explorer with the current file selected. So you might have seen the new navigation feature of Visual Studio 2013 which basically takes you to any element containing the text you enter. ReShopper also offers a way of searching for either files or classes or class members but it's got a lot more tricks up its sleeve. First of all you can switch from searching everywhere to searching for files and folders to searching for just types to searching for just type members to finally only search for members within the currently open tab. Second, in addition to typing full text or abbreviations, you can also use wildcards. You can combine search strings so as to search for a particular piece of code within a particular set of files. You can specify, for example, the line number you want to go to, and so on. ReSharper has lots of these built-in search helpers for you to use. Now, say you want to go back to a file you've been working with. In Visual Studio, this is only possible via the Recent Files menu, whereas in ReSharper, you can use a single shortcut to go to Recent Files, or alternatively, you can go to Recent Edits, which takes you to the exact locations where you were last editing something. And finally, it's important to note that in Visual Studio the navigation options are all over the place, whereas in ReSharper all of the relevant navigation options for any code element can be shown in a single menu called Navigate 2. And this menu contains many options that are far more powerful than what Visual Studio comes with. For example, it's possible to navigate to extension methods for a given type. Or for instance, if you've got a generic type, you can actually navigate to all the type substitutions on a generic parameter. Refactorings allow developers to effectively restructure their code without changing its function. Here is a look at how Visual Studio's built-in refactorings compare with those provided by ReShopper. The most popular refactoring that all developers use is the rename refactoring and Visual Studio does it well enough on simple constructs but it quite often fails to deliver on more complicated settings. For example, here I want to rename a dependency property. Visual Studio would certainly rename the property wrapper and its string reference but it would fail to rename the property itself. 
Now let's try doing the exact same thing using reshopper. So here is the age property. I choose the rename refactoring, turn age into legal age and press enter. And as you can see, not only did the property wrapper get renamed, but the property itself as well. Now both Visual Studio and reshopper have the extract method refactoring, which lets you take out a chunk of a method and put it in a different method. But reshopper goes a lot further than that. For example, it gives you the extract class refactoring. That basically lets you take out a chunk of a class, for example, when it gets too big, and put it into a separate class while preserving code correctness. And incidentally, once you've extracted something, you can move the new code to the location of your choice. So with a new class, you can move it to a different namespace, which also repositions the file in the project. And with an extracted method, you can actually pick the class where the method will reside. Another thing that reshopper can do is take an existing chunk of code and introduce a variable for it. This makes it much easier to break down complex invocations into simpler ones. Both Visual Studio and ReShopper come with code generation facilities that seek to cut down the time required to create boilerplate code. So let's see how one would create a type in Visual Studio first of all. So Visual Studio does come with a few snippets and one of those snippets is called prop. That's for creating different types of properties. So we can have, for example, an age and we can also have a Let's have a name for our person as well. Now, this is where the fun starts because the next thing you probably want to create a constructor. And even though Visual Studio does have a seed or snippet, that just creates an empty constructor. Whereas what we really want is a constructor that actually initializes those properties. So we would have to define everything ourselves, having the age and the name here and basically assigning it by hand and this is something that's somewhat tedious but there is no other way to do it in Visual Studio. And again if we want to implement some interface for example we want to implement a quality so we would have I equatable of person. Yes Visual Studio does in fact allow us to implement this interface and generate a stub but this equality stub isn't really helpful because it's doing absolutely nothing to actually compare the members of the type. So let's take a look at how this is done with reshopper. So let us now build the person class exactly the same way by do using reshopper. So first of all, I'm going to add those properties for age and name, but now I want a constructor. And what I can do with reshopper is I can press Alt insert and choose constructor from the generate menu. Now, all I have to do is specify the properties that I want to initialize, press finish and look, here is my constructor and no extra action required. Now, let's suppose I want a quality comparison as well. I can once again, press Alt insert. I can choose equality members and here I can actually pick the properties that I want to take part in the comparison. I can also specify that I want to check the fields for now. I can overload the equality operators and once I press finish I get a lot more code than Visual Studio gave me. So for example I get the correct overloads of the equals method. I get a good get hash code function and I also get the equals and not equals operators implemented for me as well. And in addition to being able to implement interfaces which is something that both reshopper and Visual Studio can do, reshopper also knows about some interfaces specifically. So for example, if I want to implement I notify property change, for example, not only do I get the option to implement the members, which is what Visual Studio could do as well, but reshopper knows specifically about the I notify property changed interface. And notice when I pick the option to implement it, not only do I get the event that's actually been described in the interface, but I also get the in event invocation function, which does the event invocation in a thread safe way. And now that this has been implemented, Reshop is actually smart enough to know that the properties should now conform to this usage of I notify property change. So if I press Alt Enter on one of these properties, I can effectively convert it to a property with a change notification. And this, this paradigm actually permeates Reshopper now in the sense that, for example, if I had a field, let's have a uh, field ID and I went to generate properties for that field, one of the options here would be to notify on property changes as well. So here I could press finish and I would get the ID field wrapped in a property with the correct implementation. So the correct invocation of notification functions. 
In all fairness, it is Visual Studio's own invention of code completion, also known as IntelliSense, that significantly improved the developer experience all those years ago. However, times have changed, and while Visual Studio continues to provide simple code completion for various languages, ReShopper has plenty of new features that really have no analogies in Visual Studio itself. So we'll begin with simple member completion. Notice when I type INPC, for example, ReShopper not only uses the abbreviation to search for the type but it actually looks in all the assemblies, including those that haven't got using statements in the current file. So I can simply pick one of these elements and complete the name, thereby getting a using statement up above immediately. Now, what if I start using an I dictionary, for example? So I type I dictionary, and as soon as I press the angled brace, notice that I automatically get a using statement for system collections generic. Now, if I then give it a name and press equals, notice that the completion list here actually gives me some of the types that implement I dictionary of string and int. So essentially, ReShopper is helping me out with initializing the structure. And this kind of smart completion, it actually shows up all over the place, giving you a completion list with only the relevant elements in it. And similarly, suppose I want to give this person a photo, so I use the bitmap type. Now, unfortunately, I don't get any completion here because system.drawing hasn't been referenced, but ReShopper lets me press the completion shortcut once again, and this double completion mechanic lets ReShopper search deeper, including searching the references of other projects in the solution. And now suddenly I have an option to reference system.drawing and add that bitmap reference. So ReShopper is asking me if I want to add the reference and after pressing OK notice I get a reference here in the console application. I get a reference to system.drawing. I also get a using statement and finally my bitmap type is now legal. Now let's add some properties. Let's have first name and then I will press Control D to duplicate the current line and change it to last name. So with first name and last name, I want a constructor. And you've already seen the generate menu that ReShopper has for generating the constructor, but we also have another type of completion called generative completion. So all I have to do is type ctor p and press tab, and this automatically generates a constructor that initializes all the properties. So hopefully in this screencast, I've been able to demonstrate the way the default features of Visual Studio 2013 compare to the expanded set of features provided by ReShopper. You can always check out ReShopper just by going to jetbrains.com slash ReShopper. There's a 30-day trial available for download. And for other screencasts on ReShopper as well as other products that we make, go to jetbrains.tv. Thanks for watching and good luck.